Come on, everybody, stand your feet. Be about to give God some praise. Anybody grateful to be in God's house today? Come on, if you're grateful, just clap your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Come on, clap your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. I can't hear you. Clap your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Because I don't know about you, but if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know where I would have been today. So I am always grateful and always excited when I have an opportunity just to come in God's presence and just to give him praise. Because it, it is only of his strength that I'm here today. It's only of his strength that I'm alive. I'm able to see my family. I'm able to see my friends. I'm able to, to just be here, just to speak, to lift my hands. I can see you. It's only because of God's goodness and his mercy. So come on, God deserve a praise. Jesus, forever, we bless you, 
Jesus. Are you a God chaser? No, y'all ain't sound like y'all no God chaser. Are you a God chaser? Yes. All right, now that sounds much better. Welcome everyone to this beautiful experience that we have here. It's a time where we come and just tell God and show God how much we love him, how much we are grateful for what he's done for us this week. Because if the week was like mine, <laughs> it's only because of God's grace and mercy that we are here or that I am here. Okay, so I want to say welcome to everyone. Welcome to our online visitors. Welcome RKC Florida. It's a beautiful day to be in the house of the Lord. We're going to go straight into our scripture, which is found in Psalms 100, verses 1 through 2. And it says, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Joyful songs. Joy is something totally different than happiness, right? Joy nobody can take away from you once you get it from the God above, right? So we're going to come and we're going to shout and we're going to sing songs and we're just going to just gonna love, up, love on some God this morning. So let us pray. Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise and we say without you, we are definitely nothing. So we thank you for choosing us, Father God. We didn't choose you. You chose us. You have chosen anybody else, but you chose us today. So we want to say thank you and we want to just love you for all the things that you've done for us and what you've saved us from and things we don't even know. But we want to say thank you. And we give this experience to you today. We say have your And now, let's get ready to shout to the Lord. Come on, let's give God some praise in this place. Come on, let's give God some praise in this place. I just want to invite you again to our worship experience. And I'm here just to let you know that the only thing you get out of worship is what you put into worship. The Bible speaks about the woman with the issue of blood. She had a need. She had this issue for 12 long years. And she had to press, she had to push in order for her to get a breakthrough. So I don't know what is it that you come here burning down with today, but I, I promise you that if you press your way into God's presence, you will find healing, you will find deliverance, you will find salvation. You will realize that that problem that you thought was, was impossible to fix, God would bring resolution in that situation. And so I just admonish you. The Bible said where one or two gather in my name, once they touch anything that concerns God, he will be in the midst. And he will be in the midst to bless. So if you if you need a blessing from God today, I guess I'll just, just forget about the persons that are around you. Those of you online, just block out all the distractions. And let's concentrate on God. Because there's only when, when, when we all come and want to go on, that we'll have the experience that we so desire. Come on, let's, let's give God some praise. Sing it again. 
We bless you, Jesus. We serve an awesome God. We serve a mighty God. Into the darkness, into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. There's none like you. So we see our God is greater. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher. Our God is a healer. He's mighty. He's our God. Our God. How many of you know that if God is for us, who can be against us? If God is with us, who can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who can be against us? If our God is with us, then what can stand against? For if our God is for us, who can ever stop you? And if our God is with us, what can stand? And if our God then what can stop us? If our God is with us, then what can stand? If our God, if our God is with us, what can stand? If our God is for us, who can ever stop you? If your God is for you, what can stand? If your God. What can ever stop you? If your God is with you today, what can stand? Come on, tell me what can stand against you. If God is on your side, yeah, then what can stand against? God is, He's mighty, He's awesome, He's holy, He's powerful. Yes. Our God is strong. Our God is higher. Our God is a healer. Come on and sing our God. Our God. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God, our God is stronger, our God is so powerful, our God is so mighty, come on, just, just begin to worship God, don't worry about the song, just begin to worship God, you mighty Jesus. You holy Jesus, for there is none like you. We bless your name, King of glory. We ask you to fill this place. King of glory, we welcome you, Jesus. We welcome you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, mighty God. Yes, the world. We'll bow down and say you are God. Every man will bow down and say you are king. So let's start right now. Why would we wait? King of glory, faith. Just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. King of glory, fill this place. 
just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. Come on, help me sing. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are. The Bible said that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess at the name of Jesus. So let's start right now. We don't have to wait. We can praise you now. We can praise you in victory. So come on, lift your voice and sing, King of Glory. Fill this place. We just want to be with you. We just want to be with you. We welcome you, King of Glory. Fill this place. We just want to be with you. So we will sing hallelujah till you come again. And we'll dance in your presence till you come again. Come on, we'll give you the highest praise. I will sing hallelujah till you come again. Lord, I'll dance in your presence. I'll dance in your presence. Till you come in. Come on, help me sing it. We'll sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. And we'll dance in your presence. We will sing hallelujah. Until you come. Lord, we will dance in your presence. Dance in your presence. Dance in your presence. Dance in your presence. King of glory. We need you to fill this place. We just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. King of glory. Come on, feel this place. We just want to be with you. We just want to be with you. King of glory, feel this. Come on, just extend your hands to heaven. King of glory, feel this. King of glory, feel this. Every hand lifted, every eyes closed. King of healing, feel this place. King of my peace, feel this. Anybody know that God is your joy? King of my joy feel this king of power king of king of glory king of glo king of glory king of king of glory king of so I'll dance so I'll dance in dance in your presence dance in your presence Dance in your presence, dance in your presence, dance in your presence, dance in your presence. Well, we'll sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. Give him the highest praise, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. Glory, fill this place. 
Just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. Come on, sing it one more time. King of glory, feel this. I just want to be with you. Come on, without the music, go. I want to hear your voice. Just want to be with you. King of glory, King of glory, fill this place. Just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. Come on, give God some worship. He bless you, God. Let's continue to dwell in his presence. That's when you find friends, family, persons that you hold there to you. They tend to leave you when trouble heart hits. But there's God who never leaves you, who never forsakes you. And I can tell you one thing, life surely is be life in. Life is be life in. Just this morning, come into church. This feeling of depression started sitting on me. And I was like, Lord, at this age in my life, I'm supposed to be further than where I am today. You know, you start doing all these things, what I could have done, where I could have been, who I could have been, all these kinds of things. And I'm like, hold on, Anya. Catch yourself. God is still good. He still sits high. And he still looks low. And no matter what is going on with you right now, just remember, God loves you. And he works things out for good for those that love the Lord. I had to check myself quickly. Because a lot of times when we look at life and where we thought or our expectations, but is it really what God expects or God wants from us? Are we leaning on God's will for our lives or our own for our lives? And that was a serious thought. And then my devotion was Psalms 23, verse 5 and 6. And the part where he says, He will prepare a table before you in the presence of your, your enemies. That means your situation, your enemies doesn't necessarily have to mean a person. Your enemy could be yourself. Your enemy could be your thought process. Your enemy could be life. And he said he prepares a table before you in the presence of what's going on. He says he anoints your head with oil and your cup runneth over. He said surely, not maybe, not if, not sometimes. But he says surely, that's an assurance that he will always surely goodness his goodness and his mercy will follow you all the days of your life so when we came in here this morning and it says shout for joy with a joyful heart that's what it means that no matter what's going on around you no matter how life life in God is still in control everything still has to answer to God okay Okay, that's my sermon for the day. I'm not the messenger. I'm not. I was not the pastor. I was not supposed to give the word, but that was just on my heart this morning. So I want to say once again, welcome, welcome, welcome to one of the most powerful places on the planet, Relevant Kingdom Center. Today, we are just glad to be in the house of the Lord, and we're glad to be amongst like-minded persons. So with that being said, it's only a few of us, some has already started and a lot of people have traveled. But for the few of us that are in-house today, I want you to step out. We're going to do some of little stuff, you know. We're going to step out, touch your neighbor, and say, you look beautiful, you look good, you know. You know, you say, if it's a girl, you say, yeah, you look good, you know. And if it's a young man, just say, you look good. You look good, 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 good. So I want you to step out. 
and just hug one another, give another daps, high five the brothers and the sisters. All right, that's what I'm talking about, brotherly and sisterly love. All right, you may be seated. Okay, welcome once again. Do we have any first time visitors in the house? First time visitors? No first time visitors, so we are all family. Well, hello family, how are we today? That's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I'm just happy to be here. I'm just happy to be in God's presence and alive today. Well, here at Relevant Kingdom Center, once again, we want to welcome our online visitors. We want to welcome RKC Florida. And we want to say to you that Relevant Kingdom Center is a place where the church and unchurched persons, that's what we want it to be, where they love to attend. You know, and we, it, we make it our mission, we make it our intent to creatively communicate the word of God in a real and relevant way. We want to make disciples, we want to develop leaders, and we definitely want to change lives through the spirit of the Lord. We have a saying here, come as you are, but I guarantee you, you're going to stay as you can. Okay, so I'll work that out. I want to let you all know, when you come here, you ain't going to stay the way you can. All these bright, smiley faces that y'all see around, they infectious. So some of that could rub off, you know. I know that they rub, rubbed off on me. So I ain't as harsh as I used to be. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. <laughs> We're going into our second week, the second week of our David series. Now, everybody knows David was a man after God's own heart. And I feel as if every believer should strive to be a person after God's own heart. He was a shepherd boy in the field tending to smelly sheep. He went from there to be anointed, to be appointed as the king. And then, you know, God ain't have no respect of where you come from. Beginnings don't matter to him. It's where you end that makes the difference. So we're going to have a brief rewind, a sermon bumper. Then we're going to have a message. But before the message, after the sermon bumper, we're going to go into our final praise and worship as we get ready to dive into our David series. One of the first things on David's priority list was to retrieve the Ark of the Covenant. Here's why. Because he did not want to do life. He did not want to lead unless he had the presence of God. Amen. With him. And Abinadab cost his son's life. All because he didn't do the right thing and handing what was responsibly his to hand down to his sons. This is how we honor God. And by that, he should have been an example, not just by words, but by action. Because watch this, then they would have known we can't just handle the presence of God like a common trophy. Man, it's our responsibility to show and to model how God should be honored. If the man just sitting in the back is folding his hand because he don't want to see him saw, amen, and all the women up on the front praising God it's good for women to praise God come on but can I just tell you when men worship there is something that happens there's something that changes and there's something that takes place On your feet, let's give God some glory. We bless you, Jesus. Lord, if I 
find favor in your sight. Lord, please hear my heart cry. I'm desperately waiting to be where you Across the heart is desert, travel near or far, for your glory, I will do anything just to see you, to behold you as my King, for your glory. Just to see you, to behold you as my King, glorify, Lord. If I find favor, Lord, please, won't you hear my heart cry? I'm desperately waiting to be where you are. How close the heart is desert. Lord, I'll travel near or far for your glory. I will do anything just to see you, to behold you as my King, for your glory, Lord, I will do anything, just to see you, to behold you as my King. Come on, God, for your glory. I will do anything just to see you, Jesus, to behold you as my king. I want to be where you are. Got to be where you are. I want to be where you are. Gotta be where you are. Come on, sing it with me. I want to be where you are. I gotta be where you are. Lord, I want to be where you are. I gotta be your presence, Jesus. I want to be where you are. I gotta be where you are. I wanna be where you are. I gotta be where you are, Jesus. I wanna be where you are. I gotta be where you are. I wanna be where you are. I gotta be where you are For your glory I will do anything Just to see you To behold you as my king For your glory I will do anything just to see you, to behold you as my king. Come on, one more time. For your glory, come on, tell God I will do anything. I will do anything just to see you. To behold you as my king, I want to be where you are. Come on, be blessed.
bless you, Jesus. With all hands lifted all across the world. Be where you are. Just pour out to God in this moment. Let it be where you are. If you're online, just raise your hands as a sign of surrender. God, we got to be where you are. God, I want to be where you are. Because without you, there's no peace. Without you, there is no joy. Apart from you, we can do nothing. God, we love you. God, we want to be where you are. God, we got to be where you are. For your glory, God, we will do anything. We're here standing today letting you know as a declaration, God, we're willing to do anything. Anything for you, anything for your presence, oh God. Because your plan is so much better than our plans. And your way is so much better than my way. And your will is so much better than my will. If you believe that all across the room, let's give God some praise today. If you believe that online, let's give God some praise today. I believe that God wanted that moment and he designed that moment just for you. Just for me said, I gotta be where you are. I wanna be where you are. I wanna be where you are. I gotta be where you are. It's the cry of our hearts. That's the posture that God wants us to be in. So I just want you just to quickly encourage your neighbor. Just find somebody to speak to really quickly and just tell them, neighbor, we gotta be where he is. Just encourage them and say, neighbor, we gotta be where God is is because where he is is what there's freedom and where he is there's what there is liberty anybody want to be free in the house today anybody say today i am free let's give god some praise if you believe it in the place today come on y'all could do better than that let's give god some praise in the place today if you believe so today i have the honor of going into week two of the david series and this is week two of the series. As you guys saw, our lead pastor, Pastor Dury, came through in the house. He was present for Father's Day. Y'all, let's give it up for our lead pastors in the house. The week before last Sunday, because you know last week we went on a little rest. It was sabbatical Sunday. Anybody enjoyed that little rest? That was a, that was a blessed rest, amen? It was a blessed rest, but now we're here and we're ready to dissect and to feed on the word of God again. Amen. So we are going into the main text today, and that's taken from 1 Samuel 17, verses 50 through 51. And it's a popular story. It's about David and Goliath. So it says, so David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone, without a sword in his hand, and he struck down the Philistine and killed him. David ran and stood over him. He took hold of the Philistine's sword and drew it from the sheath. After he killed him, he cut off his head with the sword. And when the Philistines saw that their hero was dead, they turned and ran. You want to talk to your neighbor a little bit more today. Just encourage somebody and tell them God has given you. Just look to your neighbor and tell them God has given you the power to defeat the giants in your life. That person didn't believe you. They don't really want you to defeat the giants that you got in your life. Look to somebody else and just encourage them and say, God has given you the power to defeat the giants in your life. Amen and amen and amen. If you believe that, let's give God some praise. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for the power, God, that comes through your son. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would rest on this word today. God, that they would get a fresh revelation. Oh, God, that you would wash them with the word. God, that they would never be the same. God, thank you for empowering us today. Thank you for your transformation that will happen as a result of the knowledge, God. The just shall be delivered. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. And you may be seated in the house of the Lord on today. 
So a show of hands, how many of you know the story of David and Goliath? It should be, everybody should know the story of David and Goliath. If you went to Sunday school, even if you didn't go to Sunday school, that was one of the most powerful or one of the most popular stories that came from the Bible when I was a little girl. That was one of the first stories I know after Father Abraham, right? So when we look at the story of David and Goliath, we can see that David was just a young shepherd boy and Goliath was a giant he was referred to as a giant and automatically with that description (laughs) David a young shepherd boy and Goliath being a giant we can see that David would have seemed to be the one at the deficit right he would have seen from the natural eye to be the one that had the deficit in that war so when we think about the word giant, it means a very great size or force. So that word giant, it means to be intimidating or it's something that can intimidate you. But if you know the story of David and Goliath, then you know that in the face of intimidation, that in the face of this giant, David showed up with boldness. Someone say boldness. David showed up with, someone say boldness. He showed up with boldness. So today, as we study the story of David and Goliath, because we're going to go a little deep into the scripture, a little heavy scriptural today. So I need you all to be prepared. It's going to be on the screen if you want to take notes, if you want to get out your phone and go on your Bible app, you can. But we're going to be studying and dissecting the text today. Amen. Somebody say, teach the word teach the word. Amen. So today, as we study the story of David and Goliath, I want you to see yourself as David. I challenge you today to see yourself as David. Don't just look at it from a third party. I want you to put yourself in David's shoes today. And whatever situation you're facing that looks giant or that may seem intimidating, I want you to think about that thing, right? A a challenge accepted. I want you to think about that thing. I want you to think about the situations in your life where you can't see a way to overcome it because it looks too big and it may look too overwhelming for the tools that you may seem to have in your hand to fight back. I want you to see yourself defeating that giant today. I want you to put it to the forefront of your mind, and I want you to see yourself defeating whatever giant it may be in your life today. I want you to see that anything is possible with the Lord on your side. Do you know or do you believe that anything is possible with God on your side? Because today you will see that all you have is all he needs. You may be looking in your hand like, Lord, I don't have the tools to face this. I don't have the tools to overcome this. It may seem too big, but God is saying all you have is all that I need to do and complete the victory in your life. Let's give God some praise if you believe that all you have is all that he needs. Because the Bible teaches us that the battle is who's on? It's the Lord. Someone say the Lord. And with him on our side, what does that mean? What giants come up in our life? We can defeat the giants of depression like Sister Anya talked about. We can defeat the giants of anxiety, the giants that seem to come after your family and come after your marriage, the giants that seem to come after your home, the giants that seem to come after your purpose. What does that mean? With the Lord on your side, you can and you will defeat those giants. In Exodus it says, who will fight for us? The Lord will fight for you. But what you have to do in participation with him is you have to show up. Show up as you will see that David showed up. And you have to keep on showing up. What does that look like? You have to keep on praying. You have to keep on praising. You have to keep on having faith. And although the odds may look like it's stacked against you, and although it may look like you may only have five stones and a little sling, but with the Lord on your side. But with the Lord on your side, the Lord strong and mighty in battle on your side, those five stones and that one sling will bring down the giant. Someone say, the Lord is on my side. The Lord is on my side. And we see in scripture that David won the battle because the Lord was on his side. It wasn't because of anything else but because the Lord was on his side. And today, if we can all learn and apply these keys that we're going to get that got David to be able to defeat Goliath, I believe that we can learn to bring down our own giants that we'll face. 
because you know if we live this life, you will face some things. You will face some challenges. You will face some situations. And it will be giant after giant after giant. But the thing is with the Lord on your side, you should know and have confidence and have boldness like David that you will defeat it. So the first thing I want us to look at is the kind of giant that Israel was being presented with. So let's go into 1 Samuel 17 verses 4 through 7. So it says, a champion named Goliath, right off of the bat, you're a giant that's intimidating, and now you're a champion, which means you've never lost a battle until you met the real living God, amen? You, you, you ever had some things come up on you, and it seemed like it was going to get you until you met the right person that came in and conquered it? Do I have any persons that feel like, yeah, until you met me, until you met somebody that prays and fasted, until you met me it could have run through everybody else in my family but when it met me the wall came tumbling down the giant fell when it met me do I have any people in the house that say that is gonna be my testimony I want that to be the testimony that I carry so a champion named Goliath who was from Gath came out of the Philistine camp his height was six cubits on a span that's to be nine feet and nine inches Almost 10 feet tall. I want you to imagine that. This is a, a little intimidating. I think that may be taller than the roof, right? So his height was six cubits on a spine. He had a bronze helmet on his head and wore a coat of scale armor of bronze, weighing 5,000 shekels on his legs. He wore bronze greaves and a bronze javelin was slung on his back. His spare shaft was like a weaver's rod and its iron point weighed 600 shekels. This man was wearing, just to translate, almost another person on him in armor. <laughs> 10 feet and plus you have David weight and two more Davids on you. So this is what we deal with, right? So if you didn't understand all that, what I said, just know that he was real big. Someone say he was real big. Y'all ever met anything that was real, real big in your life before? The most scariest thing that you've ever dealt with, maybe something you're dealing with now. I want you to see reality, baby. When you're a believer, things be real big. Things be real big, Right? And like I said, if you're living this life, you will face things that seem like they're stronger than you, that seems like you, you, you can't get a grasp on it, right? Things that make you feel small, things that make you feel like there's no way. Like, God, Lord, I just come over, to, I just defeat this giant, and now I have this one, Lord, Lord. <laughs> but I want you to know, and I want to encourage you today, that the giants you're faced with are meant to be conquered. The giants, the giant, whatever it is you're faced with today, I want you to know that they are meant to be conquered. Why would God present a giant in your life? To defeat you. Why would he send a giant to his son in Christ, to his daughter in Christ, just to the sole purpose to defeat you? Deuteronomy 20 and 4. For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against what? Your enemies, against the giants that are in your life to give you what? The victory. So if there's something that comes up against you in your life, if you allow him to, what will you get? The victory. So what does this mean? That if you are with God, you have what? The victory, the outcome is what? Victory, y'all don't sound too sure. Y'all talk back to me. The outcome is what? The outcome is what? Victorious. Do you see? The special thing about David was, David had an understanding of this. Isn't it important to have an understanding, not to only know the word of God, but to have an understanding of the word of God and who he is, which is why, although he may have been a shepherd boy, he moved with the courage to know that with the Lord on my side, I am already victorious. 
He knew that he served a God bigger than anything that could. You see, when you begin to understand that the thing in the front of you isn't no match for the God that's in the back of you and in the front of you, then you would understand and you would move with courage knowing that I'm going to stay placed here, God. I'm going to show up here, God, and I'm going to let you move. Because when you move, I'm a follow. And when I follow you, I know that I'm following you into victory. Let's give God some praise that the outcome is victory. Because if God is for us, then church, who can be against us? Then that means that we wouldn't only have to complain because let's be real. <laughs> we complain a little bit. We're human. When something comes up, we're going to complain just a little bit. It may not be a lot, but we're going to throw like... <laughs> One or two, little, you know. But we wouldn't only complain about the giants. We wouldn't only sit there and just watch the giants continue to tumble us over and over and over again. Because as you'll see in the story, Goliath came out and he was taunting them. They, I want you to look at the giant, Goliath, as you're the giant in your life. He came out every day taunting them. Every day taunting them. It doesn't, isn't that how it seems when you go through a challenge? Like every day is taunting you? Every day. But God has given us weapons that aren't carnal, right? And the weapons that he's given each and every one of us is to defeat every giant that is in our life. Let's go back to the scripture, 1 Samuel 17, verses 8 through 11, because this story is too good. It says, Goliath stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, why do you come out and line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine? I mean, he is very prideful. Am I not a Philistine? And are you not the servants of Saul? Choose a man and have him, because it's just me one, and, and it's all of you. Are, are you. are you not the servants of Saul? Why all of y'all out here? That's what he was saying. Choose a man, one man. You say that your God is big. You say that y'all serve the real and the living God, right? So choose one man and have him to come down to me. If he is able to fight and kill me, we will become your subjects. But if I overcome him and, and kill him, you will become our subjects and serve us. Then the Philistine said, this day I defy the armies of Israel. I challenge them. I challenge the armies of Israel. Give me a man and let us fight each other. On hearing the Philistines' words, the first reaction for Saul and his people were they were dismayed and terrified. They say, oh, that's one real bold. So you're not asking for an army. You're just asking for one man to go out. You know, sometimes we could be like, God, this challenge is too big for just me one. These generational curses is too much for just me one. But God saying, I'm going to send you. I'm going to send one man, right? One man. So Israel was already shaking in their boots. Israel was scared because they didn't have the revelation that David had. They had not yet understood what it truly means for the one and true living God to be on their side. But through David, they would be able to see that he is. First Samuel 17, verses 16 through 20, it says, For 40 days... We want, to ju we, we want to not be taunted one week, and we're like, it's enough. Two days, and we're like, okay, God, <laughs> give, give it up. But for 40 days, the people, of God, the, the people of God were taunted. It says for 40 days, the Philistine came forward every morning and evening and took his stand, which is why, what does that mean? You got to be ready. Every single day, every single morning, you have to wake up ready because he was already taking his stand every single day. It says, now Jesse said to his son David, take this ephah of roasted grain and these ten loaves of bread for your brothers and hurry to their camp. Can you tell me to take something to my brothers and you want me to hurry up? Okay, daddy, <laughs> like relax. Take along these ten cheeses to the commander of their unit. See how your brothers are and bring back some assurance from them. Verse 19 says, they are with Saul and all of the men of Israel in the valley of Elah. So really and truly, you ain't important. You there watching sheep and all of the men in Israel, <laughs> except for you, <laughs> over there watching sheep. Okay fighting against the Philistines. So in verse 20, though, it says, early in the morning, David left the flock in the care of a shepherd, loaded up and set out as Jesse had directed. 
why is this important? And how is this going to help us to defeat the giants in our, in our lives? So the first thing I want you to know is that David was a submitted man. David was a man who was submitted. And through that submission, it led to his obedience. And through that obedience, it led to him bringing Israel what? The victory. So you see, David's three older brothers had followed Saul to into the war. And if David wasn't submitted to his father and he had an angry attitude and a jealous attitude and a prideful attitude, he would have told his daddy, no, baby, you got somebody else to do it. And you want me to do it quickly? <laughs> get somebody else to do it. Because clearly my brothers are out there doing something much more important and you didn't see fit to send me. You want me to watch the sheep. So if he had that attitude of not being submitted to his earthly authority, then he would have never been in the place to get his victory. I'm going to say that again because that went over y'all heads. You have to be in a position to be submitted to the earthly authorities that God has placed here on earth so that you can be set up and in place to be led to your victory. So he didn't say get somebody else to do it. He didn't say, Daddy, I ain't no delivery boy. Nah. No, you get somebody else to do it. But because David was submitted, not only to his father, but also submitted to his own power. Someone say, I got my own. Right? You may see me in the, in the shepherd field right now, but I'm on my own path. Right? I'm on my own way. He was submitted not only to his father, but to the, his own path. He was able to respond this way. This is why you have to be content in every circumstance. Because you never know when you'll get that one call. Right? Imagine him listening to his daddy all this time, telling him, go sit in the back. Go continue to sit. And, and the one opportunity, he tells him, go. And he goes, and it leads him to being elevated. My God, the power of being submitted to authority. You may not understand it. You may not understand why, but God will use the same authority because he is the one who placed them in authority. He is the one who placed them in authority. Let's look at Romans thir 13, verses 1 through 3. It says, let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. So who God has established, he will use that same person in authority. After you continue to respect them, you continue to do what you have to do. It don't matter how they carry on. But God will use that same person to direct you into his plan for your victory. Let's give God some praise. You all ain't hear me? I said the same person who you may not understand why they're in authority. He will use that same person to direct you into your victory. It's the power of being a submitted person. And a lot of us don't like the word submission because a lot of us have a submission problem because we want to satisfy ourselves. The only person, if we're being honest, I'm going to go first and tell you all, the only person I want to be submitted to is me. <laughs> but now I'm a wife, so now I have to definitely be submitted to my husband. <laughs> But if I'm being honest in my flesh, the only person I want to be submitted to is me, right? But I want you to know that, that, that the way that God used David, his submission set the victory in motion. The way that he was submitted to his father after being in the fields all of them years, it set his victory in motion. And a lot of us can't get victory over certain things because God is looking at you like you missed the first step. You're not submitted. What, what are you submitted to? Who are you submitted to? Galatians 5 and 17, it says, For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things that you want to do. We only want to be submitted to ourselves and our flesh. You know that you're in the spirit when you're like, God, I don't know why you put this person up in government. I don't know why you put this person as my boss. I don't know why you put this person as leader. But, Lord, you put them there. So I 
will submit. And a lot of us probably think, well, I only need to be submitted to God. But we see in Romans 13 verses 1 through 3 is that God establishes the authority he placed here on earth. God set up the authority on this earth for us to submit to it. So my question is, who and what are you submitted to? Are you submitted to the authorities that God has put in place that would be able to help you to get to the starting point of your journey to victory? Are you submitted to wise counsel? The Bible tells us that there is multi- there is wisdom and a multitude of counsel. Are you submitted to the word of God even? Who and what are you submitted to? Someone say start with submission. Look to your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, start with submission. You may not understand because I know David was in the fields like that. Every time, but this one time, imagine if this was the one time he wanted to rebel against the, th- the authority. Would have put them back, probably. We wouldn't, it would have changed the trajectory of everything. But because he was submitted, he saw victory. I want you to look at your life even and see what areas aren't submitted to God. What areas aren't submitted to the word. Let's go back into the word of God. First Samuel 17 verses 22 through 24. It says David left his things with the keeper of supplies, ran to the battle lines. A lot of us, a lot of them wanted to run away. <laughs> but David was what he was running to the fight. He said, "Oh, what's going on?" So, he ran to the battle lines and asked his brothers how they were. And as he was talking with them, Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, stepped out from his lines and shouted his usual defiance. And David heard it. Whenever the Israelites saw the man, they all fled for him in great fear. Don't flee the giants that God has placed in your life. We be trying to run and run and run, and some things you just can't run away from. Some things God is calling you to because he wants you to get through this thing, to get to another thing. Then you can't get through this thing. Because what's waiting on the other side of you, when you go through the next valley, it's going to be a whole other thing. Everything is equipping you for the next level of your life. First Samuel 17, verses 25 through 27, it says, Now the Israelites have been saying, do you see how this man keeps coming out? He comes out to defy Israel. He comes out to challenge us. The king will give great wealth to the man who kills him. I, I know he was probably saying this, or they were probably saying this to be like, y'all, one of y'all, please go. <laughs> please, be tired of being out there. So whoever, whoever want to go, this is what you can get. Right? So he said, he comes out to defy Israel. The king will give great wealth to the man who kills him. He will also give him his daughter in marriage and will exempt his family from taxes in Israel. Sound like a good deal. They just wanted someone to go out. They don't care who it was. <laughs> David asked the men standing near him, what will be done for the man who killed? Because he was like, hold on, wait, what? Hold on. What will be done for the man who kills the Philistine? You don't see how good the Bible is? It's too good. Just look to your neighbor and say, it's too good. It's too good. So it says, this Philistine and removes the, this disgrace from Israel. Who, and this with Sister Anne, your favorite line is, who is this uncircumcised Philistine. Now David meant business. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? They repeated to him what they had been saying and told him, this is what will be done for the man who kills him. I want you to notice, number two, David focused on the reward. And this part made me like David a lot more. Because I was like, he human. Because a lot of us would like to be super saved and be like, Lord, you know, I'm going through the trenches. But even if you you don't do, Lord, if I don't get none for this, you ain't going to be happy. Let's let's be so real. We want to be super saved. Like, Lord, I go through. David was like, before I go step foot, 
Let me let me know what we getting after what. Let me know what I what I getting after I get this victory. And that's a good God, a God that will let you go through the trenches and come out with victory and a reward. That is the God that we serve. He doesn't just want you to go through the trenches for nothing, but He will give you the reward. Someone say, what's the reward? Sometimes the Bible says that we have to go to God like little children or we have to become like little children. So I make it a practice to go to God as a child. Daddy, what's the reward for all this? What's the reward for all this I'm going through? Because I need to know. It's too much. I mean, for your glory, amen. But what else? Tell me what else on the other side of that little thing. You know what I mean? And because we serve a God who left his word for us, right? Because where do we have to start from? I mean, he may speak some things to you personally, but we all have to start from his word. And in his word, we see his promises to us, right? And what is his promises? That we will reap a harvest if we don't give up, right? That we will be victorious, that we will be overcomers, that long life is rewarded for the righteous, that when we do certain things, blessings will flow. We, we are promised life more abundantly. Great is our reward even in heaven. So you may get a reward here on earth. But greater is your reward in heaven. So don't focus on the giant. Focus on the victory. Someone say, fix your focus. Fix your focus. Because it's the moment when you lose focus. When you lose focus on your reward, when you lose focus on the reward that God has for you, on the victory that God has on the other side, it's when you begin to feel the weight of that thing, right? And the enemy would love to distract you just to lose focus on the reward. You know that if you're righteous, you're promised long life. You know that if you don't give up, that you will reap a harvest. But the enemy wants to sow seeds into those promises to distract you. And it's when you lose focus is when you begin to feel the weight of the, the giant. You begin to feel the weight of life and what you're going through. So someone say, focus on your victory. Put the focus on the victory. First Samuel 17, verses 30, and then we're almost done. When Eliab, David's oldest brother, heard him speaking with the men, because he heard him speaking with confidence, right? He heard him speaking with boldness. I'm pretty sure nobody around there came through like David. He was like, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Why y'all scared? Why y'all standing up here to defy the, the armies of the Lord? Y'all don't know who we serve? Y'all don't, y'all don't understand who we serve. So when Eliab, David's oldest brother, realized that he didn't have the balls to do with David, then he started, he, um, he burned with anger. He burned with anger and asked, why have you come down here? And with whom did you leave those few sheep in the wilderness? So you ever had somebody try to belittle you before? Kind of sound, oh, your little business and oh, your little job and your little paycheck and your little this and your little that. <laughs> I know how conceited you are, and then you could come after my character. I know how conceited you are and how wicked you are. My God, when people see you getting closer to the victory, it's when their heart starts to show, right? It says, you came down only to watch the battle. I want you to know that when you're getting closer to defeating the giant, it'll agitate the people around you that don't want to see you win the victory. See, the enemy would bring people your way to try to tell you that you're small, right? To try to tell you that your plans are small. To try to tell you that your dreams and your visions can never happen. To try to tell you and to belittle the man that you are and the woman that you are. But you see... When you see those reminders coming your way, that should be able to fuel you. That should fuel you because you're, you know for sure, oh, I'm, I'm pushing on the right door. I'm, I'm walking in the right direction. I'm walking in my purpose. That just means that I'm this step, I'm this closer to the victory God has for me. So when you see people start coming at you like that, just say, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for the sign because I know I'm just that closer to what you have for me. So don't let it stop you from going towards the battle. Let it fuel you for the battle. So the third thing, this is the last point. David had faith in God and faith in who God called him to be. 
So David didn't only have faith in God, but he had faith in who God called him to be. First Samuel 17, verses 32 through 37. It says, David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. He's telling us, he's telling us to Saul. He is like, I know all of y'all scared. And, y- and you included King, King Saul. But don't worry, I got it. Don't worry, I got y'all. So Saul was looking at him like, little boy, (laughs) we need someone. But Saul replied, you are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a young man. And he has been a war. You see, uh, an attack came again, right? You are only this. You are, you are only that. It says you are only a young man, and he has been a warrior from his youth. You're only a little girl from the island. You're only whatever. Just know that's a step closer to your victory, right? It says, but David said to Saul, oh, sorry, Saul replied, you are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a young man, and he has been a warrior from his youth, But David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair. And he was very detailed, like, I want you to know this is everything that I've been training for right now. This is my moment. Because I want you to know that through this, it means that every season of your life, God is training you for a giant. He's training you for a new giant that's going to come your way. It's training. He had to go through lions first, and he had to go through bears first to get to this this major victory that's going to change the trajectory of his life. It says, I seized it by its hair. I struck it and I killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be just like one of them. Because I see how my daddy showed up for me back then. Because I see how the Lord showed up for me when I was just training on this little ground. And I see how my daddy showed up for me when I was in the dark room and I was being developed and nobody saw me. This is my time. Because I've been training for it. I've been praying for it. I've been praying and fasting for it. I have been preparing for this thing. Verse 37, it says, The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. Saul said to David, with this much confidence, go. What else could you say to all of that? Go and let the Lord be with you. So why was David the only one who wanted to take a stand to Goliath? Why was he the only one that could have taken a stand to Goliath? Because David was confident. David was confident in the Lord that he served. You see, you have to be confident in God. You have to be so confident in him and so confident in his plans and in his ways that nothing wavers you. That you're always prepared for the giant. That you're always prepared for the moment. When God told him to go, he went with confidence. He was the only one that could have defeated the giant because he responded from faith and not fear. You see, Israel responded from fear. But David responded with confidence. So don't let the giant shake you. Don't let what this life may bring you shake your faith. God needs you to be confident in him. Can you imagine? That's why God said that David is a man after his own heart. Because we shaking at the little things. We shaking because of pandemic. We shaking because of God says, stand confident in me. I don't care what the news is saying. I don't care how, you, how everything looking. You know that you stand in ten toes down on me. You know that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. I will reward the, your righteousness. So he had faith that the Lord was with him. He knew the same God that was with him fighting then is the same God that would have been with him fighting then. then. So my question is, do you know who is with you? Do you know who goes before you? Do you know who fight? Because sometimes we have to remind ourselves when we're getting hit with, with depressive thought thoughts and when we're getting hit with um, um, anxiety and when we're getting hit with mental things, things going on in our mind. We have to remind ourselves that's that's what it's like to wash yourself with the word of God. Remind yourself who he is. Because when you know who's with you, you'll stand in the midst of of the giant with confidence. 
and you'll know that he'll come falling down. Why? Because we heard we serve who? Jehovah Sabaoth, the God of the angel armies. Who do we serve? Jehovah Nisi, the Lord who reigns in what? In victory. But you have to be prepared. You have to be ready. Right? Because another thing that I want to mention is he was, David was so prepared, right? David was ready as soon as God called him for battle. He did uh, not one verse in here says, oh, wait, Lord. No, no, he was preparing for this, right? He was ready just as the giant was ready to meet him. He was ready too. So someone say, stay ready. So you ain't got to get ready. First Samuel 17 verses 38 through 40. It says, then Saul dressed David in his own tunic. He put a coat of armor on him and a bronze helmet on his head. David fastened on his sword over the tunic and tried walking around because he was not used to them. David was a little shepherd boy. Saul was how old? You could imagine him going, <laughs> you know, it just, just wasn't fitting. It just wasn't fitting him. And he told him, I cannot go in these. He said to Saul, because I am not used to them. So he took them off. Some of us, we would, we would suffer in that because, oh, the king, the king saw it gave me. And he was like, no, thank you. I'm good. Verse 40 says, then he took his staff in his hand, chose five smooth stones from the stream, put them in the pouch of his shepherd's bag, and with his sling in his hand, approached the Philistine. So, the, so like I said, David didn't only have faith in God, but he had faith in who God called him to be. So I'll try to put something on David that wasn't David, right? And that's why we see in this world, we have so many influences, everything getting our attention. We, we're influenced by so much that we don't even know ourselves anymore. But don't ever let the world influence you to be anybody else but who God has called you to be. So in this moment, we see the importance of knowing who God called you to be and walking in your true identity and in your individuality and staying true to you. David knew he didn't knew, need anything extra for this battle. All he needed was himself. All he needed is who he was for all of them years in the dark. All he, you see what, I, what, I, what I'm saying to you is he was so prepared. He was in the dark room prepared. Why would he change now that, that his big moment is coming? Stay the same. Stay humble. Remain who you are. A lot of us go wrong when we get up to the top. We, we change and we start acting a little funny because we got a little bit more money. Remain the same. Remain humble. It's going to get you to your next victory. So David knew the power and who God called him to be. He said, you know what? I may be little and I may not have much, but the one who is bigger is on my side, right? The, the Lord of hosts who fights for me is on my side. And I don't need to be anybody else but who he says I am. So you have to know the power in who God called you to be. If you want to defeat your giants, you have to show up in the confidence of knowing who God is and who you are in him. 1 Samuel 17, verses 41 through 47, and the story is coming to a close. Anybody enjoying this, y'all? Let's give God some praise if you're learning something from this teaching. 1 Samuel 17, verses 41 through 47, it says, Meanwhile, the Philistine with his shield bearer in the front of him kept coming closer to David. He looked David over and thought that he was a little, he was a little more than a boy. He wasn't a man. He was just a, a little more than a boy, glowing with health and handsome, and he despised him. He said to David, Am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? This is such a good dialogue. I was like, Y'all feisty. Y'all are, this is, this is good. Am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. He said, come here, he said, and I'll give your flesh to the birds and the wild animals. I said, oh. Okay, Phil okay, Philistine. He said, David said to the Philistine, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin because he was just as feisty. He was ready to go. He said, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands. You see, that's how we have to come through stepping on God's business. That's how we have to come through stepping when, when there's war. He says, this day the Lord will deliver you into my hands and I'll strike 
you down and cut off your head. This very day I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. See, we can look at somebody and misjudge them, but when they begin to open up their mouth, it's like, oh, because I could imagine Goliath was a little taken him out. He was like, oh, this little boy, he got a lot of hard mouth, for, right? First 47 says, all those who gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. So I ain't only coming after you, Goliath, but I coming after all of you. So I ain't only coming after that one giant, the giants that are set up for tomorrow and, t- and, and next week. I come in for all of you. That's the kind of confidence you have to have. I come in for everything that's going to come after me. First Samuel 17, verses 48 through 50, because you see, you approach, you approach giants differently when you know the outcome already. You approach situations differently when you already know the outcome and you know who fights for you. This is what made David a mighty warrior. He was ready when you get up in the morning. That's why it's important because you see Goliath came through a straight shooter. He, he was like, this is what I'm going to do. What you have to say? David came through straight shooting <laughs> with the word, Right? Why? Because he had on his full armor of God. That's why it's important before you leave your house to make sure that you have on the full armor of God, the belt of truth buckle around your waist, right? The shield of faith that quenches every fiery dart of the enemy. You have to have the full armor of God on the gospel of uh, of peace that, that is fitted on your feet, You have to have the sword of the spirit, which is the word of the God. Do you have the full armor of God on? Breastplate of righteousness. What do you have on? You have to make sure that you're ready for war. And for war, you need the full armor of God. The entire thing. Don't only have the belt of truth and you miss in the sword of the spirit. You need everything on. You need to equip yourself. 1 Samuel 17, verses 48 through 50. I'm about to close with this one. It says, as the Philistine moved closer to attack him, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet him. David was ready because he had on the full armor of God. Reaching into his bag and taking out a stone, he slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. I just want you to imagine. Just everybody close your eyes before we close. I just want you to imagine Whatever it is you're facing, that giant, I just want you to imagine it falling to the ground. I want you to imagine it just falling to the ground right now. I I want you to see it falling to the ground. I want you to see that thing that's been bothering you just falling to the ground. I want you to open up your eyes. And it says, so David triumphed. Right, because after it fell, I want after it falls, I want you to know that there's a triumph that's gonna come from the giant that's gonna fall in your life. There's there's gonna be a praise that comes from the giant that's gonna fall in your life. It says, with a sling and a stone, without a sword in his hand, he struck down the Philistine and killed him. Because God uses the uncommon things to win battles. God uses the uncommon things to win battles. You see, you got to praise your way through some hard seasons. And I'm about to close. You guys can stand. You have to pray your way through some situations. You have to fast through some valleys. You got to equip yourself with his word. For whatever giant you're facing today, whatever thing that you came in here with today, whatever giant that you will face if you're not facing one right now, let this be a reminder that the Lord is on your side. So with God on your side, you've already won. Let's give God some praise if you believe that you've already won. If you know that the Lord is on your side, let's give God a praise in this place. Praise him like you believe that you've already won, that the giant has already fell to the ground. This is your triumphant praise. This is the praise of the triumphant. 
because the giant will fall. God, we might not see it right now, but we declare that the giant will fall. God, we thank you. Lord, I pray for every person under the sound of my voice today. God, every giant, God, that they are facing, oh God, through the power of your word, oh God, through knowledge is the just delivered, oh God, I declare that they will be delivered from the giants in their life, God, that they will watch them fall, God, as they apply the word, the living word of God, the, the word that, 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 that is stronger, God, the word that overcomes, God, the word that is sharper than any two-edged sword, oh God, that when they apply this to their life, God, they would see every abdominal effect, oh God, I declare right now that there would be a domino effect. God, for every giant in your life, there would be a domino effect. Oh God, we thank you right now. God, that the giants won't scare us, oh God, but we would run to the next battle. God, that we wouldn't be scared, oh God, and we wouldn't want to stay still and stagnant, God, and hide ourselves. God, but we would be like David and we would run to the next mission. God, that we would run to the next assignment, oh God. God, thank you for your word. God, we submit ourselves to you. Oh God, you are worthy to be praised, oh God. You are worthy to be praised. God, we thank you for deliverance. God, we thank you for freedom. God, we thank you for what you're doing in and through our lives. God, we give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. God, let them seek you. God, let them find you. God, let them love you like never before, God, so they can submit to your word. We thank you for a fresh outpouring of your love on us. God, that, we, that you love us so much, God, that you would show us how to defeat the giants in our lives. Oh, God, we thank you, God, for hearts that are after you like David. God some praise in agreement we say amen and amen y'all let's give God some praise like we believe his word today come on now uh, you can do better now let's give God some true praise in this place today giants will fall giant giant shall fall Sister Angie, thank you so much for that wonderful word that you shared with us today hallelujah we give you honor and glory in Jesus' mighty name. All of those in agreement would say, amen, amen, amen. We are about to go into another aspect of our worship experience today. You may be seated. And uh, we are about to go into our giving. Yes, giving. And uh, here at Relevant Kingdom Center, um, you don't give just to a church, but you give through church. We are indeed the hands and feet of Christ here uh, in the island of Exuma and also in the Port Charlotte, Florida area. And so when you give, you give through our ministry for us to help those around us. to life pastor Dory thomas here 
pastor of Relevant Kingdom Center in Exuma, Bahamas, and of course, your brother from another mother. And I'm so grateful that God's connected me to your pastors, Pastor Dave and Casey Gargano. You guys have shown extravagant generosity to the people of the Bahamas, in particular, the people of Exuma, Bahamas. I know and I remember during the time when the hurricane that was a Category 5 passed through those islands, you guys came together and you had compassion and you sent all trailers of supplies and and aid to the people of the Bahamas and man we will never forget that and of course I'm excited again because you guys are showing once again extravagant generosity by sending your pastors to Exuma Bahamas to be with us so that we can now begin to impact people that are in need in the Bahamas you know people look at the Bahamas and think oh it's just a beautiful place and nothing's wrong there it's paradise and truly it is paradise but can I just tell you in areas in the settlements in the Bahamas and Exuma in particular there are settlements that you have very elderly people that can't make ends meet that it's difficult to find daily food and so what we want to do is we want to go into those settlements with your pastors and we want to be a blessing to those elderly people and then the average minimum wage in the Bahamas is six dollars and fifty cents as a matter of fact gas prices are five dollars and seventy five cents per gallon so that tells you how difficult life can be for people that are making minimum wage. And we were able to get a gas station, even though they're closed on Sundays, we were able to get a gas station to get open on Sundays so that we can do pull up for a full up and bless single mothers and those in need with a full up in their cars. Because I'm telling you, it's going to go a long way. And so Road to Life, again, I want to say thank you for your extravagant generosity and for everything that you're doing for the people of Exuma, Bahamas. And I can't wait for your pastors to be with us.